Hello, in this video we're going to start creating our states. The first state we're going to create is the splash state with him, which in many games you show like your logo or your name, just some sort of introduction and then you move on to something like the game state. You may also remember from the game loop video when we implemented the game loop that the application was crashing, that was fine because we didn't have an initial state to load and again the splash state a lot of the time is the initial state. You could go directly to the main menu state, you could even go directly to the game state or anything you want, that is entirely up to you. Also we're not just going to be creating the splash state in here, we're going to start setting up the game for our tic-tac-toe game. The first thing we really need to do is get the resources for tic-tac-toe. We need like background, we need sort of circle and X images, we need title images, all of that good stuff. Luckily we've created all that for you. If you go to the GitHub page there'll be a link with this video. Go to code, go to state creation, go to splash state. You can realistically go to anyone that's named seven or above because that's where we first introduce resources and just download this resources folder and once you've downloaded the resources folder add it to your project like I have where your CPP files are and your header files are. Once you've done that we're ready to go on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is create a new file. So right click new file. This isn't going to be a state yet. We want a header file. We're going to make sure we add it to our target. We're going to call it defi definitions.hpp and the definitions file will contain a bunch of different definitions for stuff like the width and the height of our screen, the sort of animation times that we want to use, file paths and the reason for this is we can easily update it. You can think of it almost like a configuration or a settings file. We can easily update it and any changes will propagate through our application. Imagine this, if we have loads of different scenes and you can switch between the scenes and the time to switch between scenes we're keeping it uniform and let's say five seconds but after releasing it we think no for, for five seconds is too long we want to reduce it to two and a half seconds instead of going into you know every single state and changing the actual transition time to two and a half you just come into definitions change one variable one define and it propagates throughout our entire application that's the same for resources as well. So you don't want to have to be going through a bunch of code files. At the moment it's quite manageable, but when you get a massive game, if you have something like this, it's fantastic. So let's get started. Just do hash pragma once. Then you want to do hash define. I'm going to close this so it's easy for you to see. Screen underscore width. And for this I'm going to put 768. Hash define. This might be slightly different to this the width and height that was set in the game loop video, that's fine. This particular screen height and width is really set for the resource size, so this will be great for that. But you can easily modify it, that's the whole point of this definition file. Screen height, which is 1136. Then we're going to do a hash define for the splash state underscore show time so this is just going to be how long we want the splash state to show then we're going to do a hash define for splash underscore scene or state you can call it whatever you want I've ended up calling it scene background underscore file path and for this you just specify the file path of your background and as the code files are within this folder, you will need to do resources, res, then we'll whichever image you're trying to find. So resources, for slash res, for slash splash, background.png. We can save that. At the moment, there's not many lines of code in this file, but as you create and update your application, this will expand, and that's a great foundation for your application. Next, we're actually going to create our splash state and your first state. You can use this as a foundation for all future states. So just add a new header file and CPP file in the normal way. So I'm going to call it 
splashed state. So splash state. Add it like so. And now in the header file, we just want to get rid of all the code here for hash pragma once hash include sfml graphics.app we'll need this to be able to draw a particular sprite on the screen hash include state because it's a state we're going to need some functionality from the state file and hash include we're always going to need the game file because it's like the main backbone of our application that brings everything together like input asset management and all that good stuff namespace remember just make sure you got a consistent namespace for me sonar class splash state and this is going to inherit from the state class so it's going to be a child of that so it's going to have all its functionality because again this is a particular state public and the first method is going to be the constructor it's going to take a parameter of game data ref which will be all of the items that form our application so if i go to game header and it will essentially have an instance of this a shared instance of this so we can access the state machine the window that the user is seeing the assets and handle input we go back to the header file we need a semicolon here then we need to do void in it so this will be called just to simply initialize our class and we're not going to have any pull or resume methods here as this is what a very simple example of a state but you could easily have pause and resume methods which will get called when a state is being paused or resumed now we're going to do void handle input so this will just be called to handle any input void update we don't need to call these ourselves these will be automatically called from our game scene from from our game loop and our state machine that's all handling all of this for us which is fantastic void draw this also takes float dt and now we're going to do private game uh, let me just put some empty spaces so it's easier for us to navigate game data ref and it's going to be underscore data so it's going to have a pointer to the actual game data ref so ff clock so this is just going to be how long this is going to allow us to track stuff like how long the application has been running for in seconds that sort of stuff and then finally we're going to have an sf sprite for the background like so now if we go to the splash state cpp we can start implementing all of this so first of all let's just get rid of all this code we need to do hash include we need the s stream we need to also include the splash state which i accidentally deleted then we need to do a hash include for the IO stream. So IO stream. Now we need to do namespace sonar. Now we need to do splash state. Colon colon splash state. And for this, we're gonna take in the game data ref data. We're gonna assign it to data like so. So the actual curly braces won't have anything in between them but you can set stuff up here if you wanted to but generally if you do set stuff up it would be in the initialize method which is called in it and all states will have this so first of all we're going to load a texture into our asset manager to do that very simple just do this underscore data which contains the asset manager assets Dot load texture and now the name that we want to apply to our texture which is 
splash state background and now the actual file name you can either put a specific file name or you can do what we've done is splash underscore and it is not appearing let me have a look at why okay my bad I have not included the definitions file so what you want to do is include the definitions file you could include it in one of these or you could include it in one of these files so it propagates down I'm just going to include it here so we know exactly where we have it so definitions if we go back to here and we'll have splash scene background file path so that has loaded it like so now to set it to our background all we have to do is load it back from our or retrieve it back from our asset manager so underscore background dot set texture and for the texture we're going to do this underscore data assets dot get texture so the name is the name that we set right here so we can actually just copy and paste this to save some time and now put a semicolon there and that's it for the init method now we're going to do handle input so void splash state handle input we're going to do sf event event we're going to do while so we need to poll the event to do that just do this underscore data remember we did a lot of this when we set up our project and we initially had a simple sfmr application within the main file remember we're just abstracting it out and creating an ordered structure now dot poll event and this is event like so we're going to do if sf event closed if that equals the event type then all we want to do is do this underscore data so we're just handling if the actual user is trying to close it we need to handle stuff like that so like so and that's the only event that we want to handle in here so we don't want to handle anything else like input because it's just going to be on a timer then it's going to change to the well the main menu we're going to do void splash state update and float dt and in here is where we are going to check if five seconds have elapsed if they have then we will i mean not five seconds i don't know why i said that a certain amount of time has elapsed and this is where we will then change to our game scene main menu scene i should say so clock dot get elapsed time dot as seconds if it's greater than the variable that we created in here splash state show time i'm going to set this to free so it's a little longer so splash state in here is where we would actually switch to the main menu we'll be covering that when we actually implement the main menu state in a separate video for now we we'll do std see out go to main menu so we know that this is being called at the right time and finally we need to do void splash state draw and this is where we would handle all of the drawing of our objects so this underscore data window first of all we need to clear the screen every single time and then we need to redraw it because that will make sure we get any updates you can put whatever color you want i'm just going to put color red as the default color but our background will go over that so you won't actually see that red then we're going to do this underscore data window dot draw and this is the way you draw something you would just do, you would get the actual item so for me it's underscore background which is a sprite and finally you need to actually display this to the window 
the window dot display like so so now that we've done that what we need to do is go to our game.cpp so in game.cpp we need to first include the splash state header file then underneath here this is where we would first load our initial state so data machine dot add state so the machine is referring to the state machine and for this you just need to put state ref new splash state and it requires a parameter of data and we just do this underscore data like so and that's it that will now load the splash state as the first state there's only one last thing that we're going to do and that is if we go to the main.cpp file in here we are explicitly setting the width and the height we want to make that a bit more dynamic so we're going to do hash include definitions here we're going to put screen width screen height and the reason we're you know using these variables and instead of just changing the numbers explicitly is because if we decide to change the resolution of our application we can go easily into that definition file and change it you still might be wondering but why would you want you know a define and the reason you would want something like a define or a variable like a constant variable is because your application will be factoring in stuff like screen width and height for positioning and sizing of different items as you'll see in future videos and going through every single code file and making sure that you change all that will be such a pain and we can also update this as well to say tick tack toe okay so now let's run our application so succeeded and okay saying fail to load font let's have a look at what the problem is so if that's a font 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 we're loading an image so if we go to the splash state that's where we're loading up for load font instead of load texture there we go that should fix the problem run it now and okay fail to load image let me see what the problem is ah i think i know what the issue is you might get this issue on xcode so if you go to your products this will essentially be your executable right click on it go show in finder if you go to here and there's no resources folder that means the resources folder hasn't been copied over let's manually copy it and paste it here like so so now if we run it it should be able to access the resources yep fantastic and if we go over after a few seconds it shows go to main menu which is from here so that's it we got our splash state working if you have any questions feel free to post them on my educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk if you want to check out the source code code feel free there'll be a link attached with this video and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day